Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. moment in a highway patrol officer's life that he is not prepared to make a decision. Some decisions come directly from the manual, others from repeat experiences. But the split-second decision of when to shoot, take a life, is his alone. In the early morning of November 19th, patrolman Mark Reynolds was faced with such a decision. Let me see your driver's license. Long time no see, copper. Get out of that car. Now, is that any way for a highway patrolman to talk? as male, approximately 29 years. Six feet, dark hair, about 175 pounds. This is a Green Valley stolen, taken 15 minutes ago. Hi, Mark. What's the matter? Is the graveyard shift catching up with you? Hi, Morris. Hi, Mark. Good morning. What do we got today? Mostly things to sign. I did get a rundown on the Carter case. I found him as the defendant in an old case in Superior Court files. Well, that'll give us something to go on. Let me have those papers. I'll sign them. Can I see you for a minute? Yeah, sure, Mark. Come on in. Well, what can I do for you? What is it? You better read it. Sign these papers later. Sit down, Mark. All right, what is it? It's right there in front of you. This is only a piece of paper. I want it from you. I just want to resign, that's all. Mark, the patrol has been my life. I've worked hard to keep it a clean, efficient, respectable organization. Now, I can't have a smooth-running organization unless my men are happy and have full confidence in me. I wouldn't have a man in the department. I couldn't back to the hilt. I've never been let down, so I can't see why we can't straighten this out now. Try me. Take a couple of days to get a replacement. Is that all right? Certainly. Mark. Whatever it is, I'm on your side. I know it, Dan. Mark, now 
Tom Snowden on there. Will you stop at Superior Court and pick up the Carter file? I think he was a plaintiff a few years back. Sure, Dan. I'll swing by there on the way home. Morris, give me the personnel file on Mark, will you? Read it to me. Mark Reynolds, age 28, married, graduate from State U, honor student, captain of football team, three years in Army, commissioned in action, awarded four citations. Joined Highway Patrol three years ago, awarded two citations, efficiency and bravery. Next in line for promotion. Well, what do you think of it? Couldn't be better. And I wonder why he wants to resign. Resign? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I think I'll go see Mrs. Reynolds. You can reach me there if you want me. So that's why you sent Mark at that wild goose chase. I thought for a moment you'd forgotten that I picked up that Carter file yesterday. I haven't forgotten. Mr. Matthews, this is a surprise. And may I come in? Of course. You'll have to excuse the room. I wasn't expecting company this early in the morning. Company? And I wish this was a social call. Oh, well, Mark should be along any moment now. You see, I don't want to talk to Mark. I want to talk to you about Mark. Why is he resigning from the department? Resigning? You mean you don't know? I can't believe it. Surely he would have told me. When did he tell you? Well, this morning. I tried to talk to him. Anne! Oh, Anne, child, you've got company. Mark's father. He's had a couple of strokes, and, well, I think you'll understand. Of course. Uh, uh, thank you, child. Who's your company? I'd like you to meet Dan Matthews of the Highway Patrol. Dan, this is Mark's father. Highway Patrol? That's right. M Mark's friend? Yes, indeed, Mr. Reynolds. You should be very proud of Mark. He's one of our best. Mark? Oh, yes, Mark. He's a good boy. Uh, for a minute, I thought you were speaking of Bill. <laughs> now, there was a boy you would have wanted on your force. When it came to drive and ambition, Bill was way ahead. He always wanted to see the world, to be a success. He wanted to live. Mark, well, he just stuck to safe things, college. A job. He didn't have the adventure in him. Uh, uh, let me show you. And will you get his medals? See what I mean? When he was alive, he lived. Mr. Reynolds, we'd have been very proud to have Bill in the department. Dad, I think it's about time for your medicine. Will you excuse us? Certainly. Excuse me. Hello? Oh, yes, he is. Just a moment. It's for you. Oh, thank you. Hello? Oh, hello, Sheriff Winters. How are you? You what? Oh, that's fine. Did you check it? What's the name? Oh, John Bennett. Did you check the prints, too? Okay, fine. I'll be right over. That Carter file you sent me after this morning was checked out by Morse yesterday. What did you know? Yeah, I knew. Hi, darling. Mark, now that everything's out in the open, I'd like to talk to you. Will you sit down, please? Well, maybe I... What well, I have to say concerns all of us, and I'd like to help if you let me try. Please sit down. You know, we've been through all this, Dan. No, not this we haven't. That phone call I just received was from the sheriff at Starbuck. The suspect I put the alert out on, well, they picked him up. In his possession, he had keys that he admitted taking away from a highway patrolman. The keys were for car 2240. That's your car, Mark. And how you could allow a thing like this to happen is beyond me. 
This morning I was faced with a decision. I couldn't follow it through. And this instant proved to me that I wasn't fit for the responsibilities of patrol work. That's not true and you know it. This morning, I was slugged by this speeder. I guess that's when he got the keys. When I finally had him in the sights of my gun, I couldn't fire. I had his life in my hands with a split second to make a decision. I was incapable of making that decision. Split second decisions are not only made by the police, they're made in other businesses as well. Nobody knows how they're going to react to a given situation. You cross that bridge when you come to it and you know it. Now, Mark, I don't think you're incapable. At the moment, I think you're... Well, I, I think you're tired, that's all. It's no good, Dan. I've got to quit. How will you call the office? Tell him I'm going over to see the sheriff at Starbuck. I want to talk to the suspect. Dan, this just came in. Jailbreak and shooting at the Starbucks Sheriff's Office. John Bennett escaped and is armed. He was last seen driving a light green sedan headed west on 36. No license number given. All right, have 2218 stop all traffic at the intersection of 36 and 10. Have 2220 throw up a roadblock on 61, two miles off 36. I'm going to Starbucks. <laughs> Stopped two slugs. The suspect overpowered him and took his gun. It's too bad. When this was an old-time sheriff, he's going to retire in a couple of weeks. Look, you better get out to Highway 36 right away. Right. Highway Patrol Headquarters right away, will you? Morse, it's Matthews. Get in touch with Mark Reynolds. Have him get to my office right away. I'm coming right in. the suspect yet? Nothing yet. Mark's in your office. The call comes in. Let me know immediately. Mark, your brother Bill Reynolds just shot the sheriff at Starbuck and escaped. having escaped jail was on the highway. All avenues of escape were being blocked by units of the patrol and the sheriff's office. Back at headquarters, a strange story was being told by patrolman Mark Reynolds. And it was at the same time that Dad had his first stroke that Bill got into a jam. I, I kept it from Dad. That was only the beginning. Time and time again, Bill got into trouble. And finally, he served a term in the state pen. That's when I told Dad that he had a good job in South America. Does Ann know this? And when Dad had his second stroke, we, we figured that he didn't have much time. And the war came along. Bill managed to pardon to join the Army. Right off, he tries an Army payroll job, and he ends up in a military prison for 15 years. Dad got worse. Now, Bill's escaped. Dad's very much alive. Bill and I are on opposite sides of the law, and he's bound to be caught. Dad's got to die of a broken heart. You think resigning will help? I've got to. 
If I'd have done my duty, I, I would have shot my own brother. Mark, you can't run away from it. Now I can see it all now, Mick. Great copy for the newspapers. Cop's brother escaped criminal. You found out about it, others will too. No, I guessed it. See, when the reports on the prints came in over the teletype, one of the aliases was Bill Reynolds. Let's go out and see Morse. Come on. units in place? Yeah, this whole section is blocked off. It's not likely he'd be outside of that circle, but I'd like 50 extra men to help me prove it. Mark, I want you to stick with me. It's been 40 minutes now. He can't be. 2118 to headquarters. 2118 to headquarters. I got it. Go ahead, 2118. I picked up a young man stripped of his clothes and badly beaten. My location is about five miles north of Schaefer Crossing on a side road off 36. The ambulance is on its way. We'll meet you at the emergency hospital. 10-4? Let's go, maybe we got something. As far as 103? Sure am. Hop right in, boy. Thanks, Pop. When was he found? Well, it happened just before I got there. It took about 15 minutes to get here. It must have been about 20 minutes ago. Who found him? Well, an old fellow, but he was so rattled he couldn't talk much. Did he give you anything at all? Well, it seems the old fellow was working in an orchard. He heard a car drive up. He thought it was his boss driving in. He went over to investigate and stumbled on the boy here. Did he, he... give you a description of the driver of the car? No, he didn't even see him. Good 
Good afternoon. Where are you gentlemen from? I am from Green Valley, doing a bit of surveying over on Clark Road. Well, what's up, officers? A little trouble here. We're ordered to stop all cars. How about you, sailor? I'm on my way back to the base. I gotta be back by tomorrow morning. This man was nice enough to give me a lift. Got your liberty card? Sure. All right, go ahead. It was immediately established at the emergency hospital that Bill Reynolds was now disguised as a sailor. Get this thing moving, Pop. Look, son, I'm doing 30 miles right now. It's as fast as I ever go. You better get going faster if you want to live. All right, all right. Come on, flatten that out. All right, all right. Go, go. Attention all units. Attention all units. This is 2150. Suspect now believed to be dressed as a Navy man, so hold all Navy personnel. 2218 to 2150. 2218 to 2150. 2150, go ahead. Suspect just passed through roadblock here just a few minutes ago. He was dressed as a Navy seaman. In a station wagon headed north on 10. Tell him. I'll be in contact. 10-4. Here's where we are. Here's where he broke through the roadblock. Now he's trying to get to Highway 103. If he gets there, he's going to have a lot of roads to cut off on. If we can catch him on 10, he's only got this one dirt road that cuts back. That's the road we're going to take. 2150 to 2212. Established for roadblock at the intersections of Highways 103 and 10. Suspect headed north on 10. He's traveling in a 1954 station wagon. Dressed as a seaman. Use caution. He's armed. There's our boy. Contacted suspect heading north on 10, approximately eight miles south of 103, heading straight for you. We're following. Hey, these boys are playing for keeps. I better reach up. The old man will have a better chance. We'll let the boys up in front take care of them. Tried to kill me, his own brother. Got him? Yeah, that's him. Check the old man, see that he's all right. And right. take care of the suspect. Feel better? All right, Mark, you can wrap it up. When you get the highway cleaned up, drive back in with Blake. I'm going in to make a report. Report? Yeah, on the suspect. What's his name again? Uh, well, John Bennett. It slipped my mind for a minute. Resignation. The highway patrol story next week is a very unusual one. We hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember, the clowns at the circus, they're real funny.
But on the highway, they're murdered. This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week.